20 matches into the Vancouver Titans' assault on the Overwatch League, and only a single team has defeated them. Super, he has to be careful. He's caught out of the oh. He's down. That's the first pick. And now the rest would follow him. Bumpy, it's a huge ass shadow. And the Vancouver Titans stand on the precipice. They went 14-0 across the first two stages and 5-1 in the playoffs. They had a near-perfect record in their first ever stage of Overwatch League, fighting against the tide of last year's powerhouses. As he tries to use a self-destruct, John who gets Kellex with his self-destruct instead, and Vancouver just rolling over Boston, the Titans. Frankly, these guys showed up in LA, beat everyone's asses, and left an everlasting mark on the Overwatch League stage. They say the North never forgets But what's truly special about Vancouver is where they came from, where their journey to the Overwatch League began. This is just something special, something a, a little different. The Titans began as a team of friends dressed in pink, united when it seemed like the odds were permanently stacked against them. Runaway is uh, looking like one of the kind of surprise, uh, really good teams here in the tournament. At first, Runaway was a passion project for Runner, a Korean League of Legends streamer who saw Overwatch as his opportunity to make the jump into esports. These guys are coming in really hot. They are uh, led by a popular streamer here in Korea who is also a pretty good player. He paid for everything, put his streaming career on the back burner, and the team began their journey at the Apex League in Korea. Yeah, and their name, uh, Runaway, does come from Runner, the streamer that you're talking about. Now he's really dialed back on the streaming. He's very serious about becoming a professional player here, and so refocused himself, put a squad of five other guys around him, and as you say, came off with some impressive wins. It was during this early era of Overwatch that Runaway became a fan favorite in Korea. They weren't the best team in the world. Hard fought by Runaway, certainly looking improved, but Luxury Watch Blue is certainly the, uh, the better team overall tonight. They didn't have stacks of cash or traditional esports backing, but they were a tightly knit team that had chemistry on stage, and fans loved them. Well, let's take a look at Runaway, and of course, Runner sitting on top in the captain's chair. It's kind of like the bridge of a Star Trek ship, isn't it? I it's love kind it. Of up there, yeah. Looks great. That mine, the odds were heavily stacked against them. They were a small team funded by one person, facing down the likes of Cloud9, Fnatic, and Envious, who had all flocked to Overwatch with dollar signs in their eyes. They couldn't just be a fan favorite forever. To really make it, to make money, they were gonna have to win. And Kongdu Panthera, are they on the home stretch? Looks like they may be, and that's it. Kongdu Panthera, they get the two points. What a heartbreaker for Runaway. After showing so much prom uh, promise, after having such a fan following for Hoxhaus Genji, kind of a lackluster end to their season. And in the following year of Apex, they leveled up. I can't believe it. Runaway coming in on paper. Oh my. Such an underdog in the semifinal, and they will win it 3 2. Runaways going to the semifinals, and Runner. <laughs> Runner He's so excited. The air he is that's breaking a, a the booth. <laughs> goes down in this push probably going to get stalled out oh a five-man earth shatter though they're gonna give the nano kaiser! He gets to the eye of the kaiser can they get it the rest of the way though it's got a long way to it's go it's a team fight it's a team wipe yeah that they is got everyone i don't know the payload moving oh they can't quite get it there again it's so close just 0.8 meters away hoxall still getting the kills the may goes down before the ice block they'll do it runaway goes to the finals what a story for runaway promotions last season now in the grand finals taking down lw blue tears on the faces of runaway you know a team that people counted them out in the end of the group stages they counted them out in the quarterfinals they counted them out today in the semifinals and they have proved that none of that matters they are going to the apex season two grand finals lunatic high taking on runaway the dark horses versus the uncrowned kings you couldn't ask for a better finals lineup they need to make this work cox on the reaper now they better fear him bumper pushes back with the whole hog before he goes down but lunatic high now winning this fight runaway they've got it they take Route 66. And very nicely done at the end. There's OT. Has Lutik High finally done it? The Uncrowned Kings. Kaiser comes in with the primal rage to try to turn it around. 
try to be a hero one last time, but Lunatic High is lighting up that kill feed. He's staying alive, he's trying to make it happen, but that is it! Lunatic High will be the champion! Finally, third time to charm it, they will win Apex Season 2. But after their loss in the finals, their role as the little team that could finally caught up to them. Sponsorship opportunities that would help Runner fund the team fell through, and their lack of a team house or any formal team structure started to take their toll on the team chemistry. They lost one of their star players, Kaiser, to C9, an organization that can clearly offer more to young talent. While at the Apex, I was in run of Team Runaway. About me getting the second place in Apex Season 2, it's just, uh, just me get, thinking about at least we got the second place. But I only aim for the sec first place. So that's how I decided to step down and join the Cloud9. The fallout of that Season 2 loss left them reeling. They looked like a shell of their former selves, and were still broke and sponsorless. And Runaway runners up to Lunatic High in Season 2, so always the bridesmaids for now. Wanting to separate themselves, and very interesting story here, given that the murmurs around Runaway is that perhaps our expectations need to be adjusted just a little bit down. Runaway really seemed to lack cohesion with Kaiser out of the lineup. They were switching tank members left, right, and center, trying different identities, looking for something that resembled what they had in Season 2. And Time Boy picks up one. Godsby another. No Smite picks Johnny one up Stitch. as well. They're trying to push this one forward. It's three meters until round of eight, back six, and they do it. The newbies into Season 3 Apex. This is devastating. As you can see their concern, Runaway will not be going through to the round of eight. Runner had a family now. He had a wife and a kid, and that meant he couldn't put up the kind of financial support the team needed to get a team house. So he decided to pull out, disband Runaway, and call it quits. But it was his wife, Flowervin, who forced Runner to give it one last chance. To give this team, his family, one last shot at doing what they set out to do. They banded together and rented a crappy apartment in Korea. Players helped pay the rent, flower events spruced up the place, and fans even donated. One fan chipped in a washing machine. Runners stepped in as coach, and they were going to give this you-need-to-see-it-to-believe-it Cinderella story one more try. And this time, the Overwatch League was on the horizon. Blizzard Entertainment is proud to announce the Overwatch League, a global world-class eSport league designed from the ground up to celebrate the best of the best on their path to victory. Massive holding groups with fat wallets were buying into the league, and more than ever, Apex was a proving ground for players who wanted to make it. The Overwatch League was the light at the end of the tunnel for Runner, Flowervin, and the entire Runaway family. Hear the cheers right there from the Runaway fans. Of course, the Season 2 final is still carrying over their fandom despite the poor run in Season 3. Propelled by the momentum of this weird esports family they'd become, Runaway made yet another playoffs appearance in Season 4. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Apex Season 4 Grand Final between GC Busan, the Royal Rotors, who want to complete their journey, take home the title versus Runaway. Our runners up in Season 2, back to take another crack at the trophy. And a team that is a veteran team of Apex. They've been in Seasons 1 through 4, not a single season. They were not present. So the story of a team that struggled, found their way in Season 2, but were unable to compete well in Season 3, dropping out early in the group stage. Season 4 made their run. But once again, they were left heartbroken. That is likely going to be it. I think they might have just done it. Tizzy, Tizzy makes walks it his way back well, in, but no he's way. all on his lonesome. He needs the primal rage. He gets it available. He pops it. He's smacking them all away. He has to jump up in the air. Oh! He doesn't come down in time. Tizzy, no, what have you done? What an absolute heartbreaker for Runaway, for Tizzy, to lose in such a manner. 
After that year, many of their fiercest competitors moved on to the greener pastures of the Overwatch League. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the London Spitfire. London, arguably the second most stacked lineup behind the Seoul Dynasty, and they're only the, they're the only team in the league with 12 active players on their lineup. But Runaway were left behind. They were unquestionably a great team who looked great on stage together, but they were passed up for other talent. They'd failed to reach their goal, they lost more players, and then Runner had to leave the team to serve his mandatory military service. But unlike esports teams, families don't quit on each other. Flowervin took over Runner's role in managing the team, and they banded together to make their mark on the Overwatch League contenders in Korea that season. QOQ eliminated. Final grenade coming through him, gets rid of that baby knee by Pumpler here. Primal Rage, plus that nano boost, he is just ripping through them. Overtime, ticking down, and that might just be a no fat. Last tag in does come through, Undyne, trying to stay alive, trying to stay on top of this as best as he can, but the self destruct comes through. Oberon eliminated, Fuse has gone down, and run away do it yet again. They get the final push in OT, and then they're able to bring it home with a victory. 4-0 for them on the day. And that's when they showed the Overwatch League what kind of talent they left behind. From Club Commander, but they need to get kills to get the lift. Take so close to Going down, they're looking for Pumper. He doesn't have the primal rage. The something struck finds Roar. Run away, trying to take this. Shoebill, he's gonna go down. He's out, but Ding is so low. He'll get finished off and run away. I think they might just be able to do it to close this one out. Koma goes down and Plummet. Run away, take it a 2 0 on Oasis. They're going to the semifinals tomorrow. Kongu, they got so damn close, but in the end, they just cannot do it. Run away, another cheering moment here in the booth. They're not in the finals yet, but it was a closer series than anyone could have anticipated. And then the fifth map, they come up big. Even Stitch, rarely emotional here, getting caught up in the excitement as Flower Bin runs in. Runner is here <laughs> in the studio. I know he's hiding backstage. He's not allowed, of course, to show his, himself on camera because of the military rules, but I know he's backstage, happy <laughs> and hyped. They lost in the semifinals in Season 1 of Contenders, but in Season 2, they finally secured the major tournament win they'd fought for for so long. Barrier gonna get broken, the shield pass comes in a bit too soon. Jenner comes down, he's gonna find one, but it's Coma. Roar manages to get Hawks with his short, but Bumper gets rid of the enemy Lucio at the same time. Jono knocks Grab out of the back. Grab's gonna be for Gonna be dead. Both teams gonna be eliminated. Bumper's still in the fight, however. He gets Roar. Youngjin goes down. Bumper been there with two members left alive. Can they actually extend this? Oh my god, the mic's on the side, but it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's gonna plummet. And that just should be the end. Run away, they finally got it. The third attempt. They get the championship win. We got more confetti. Don't worry, guys. We're gonna pop some more off. The third time out. They manage to push themselves over the finish line. They get the victory all the way to eight maps, all the way to three rounds on Ilios, but they finally do it. They did it. Apex season two, they failed. Season four, they failed. They failed to Apex, but in contender season two in the sixth season of Korean Overwatch, fans are in tears, but this time for a different reason. I mean, the, the, the feeling of relief that this squad has to be experiencing right now they come out and they will be able to, for the first time in their careers, lift this trophy as a squad, still in tears, some, somewhat in shambles, just so elated that they have finally done it. One man's dream turned failure, turned reality. A family of teammates who wouldn't take no for an answer. And then in October, 2018, Flowervin announced that Runner's dream had finally been realized. <laughs> OWL Season 2 Runaway 선수들이 리그 계약이 완료된 선수가 있습니다. 바로 전원 계약이 완료되었습니다. Most of the Season 2 expansion teams cherry pick the best players from rosters all over the world, but the Vancouver Titans were an exception. They signed the entirety of the Runaway family. And in storybook fashion, they made the jump to the Overwatch League together. Through it all, they'd arrived on the biggest stage, still standing together. And they showed up with something to prove. 저는 이 경험들이 오버워치 리그에서 좋은 역할을 할 거라 생각합니다. 
준우승을 많이 해서 그 팀의 성장이 굉장히 많이 된 거라고 생각해요. 왜냐 대회 경험이 계속 쌓이는 거니까 더큰 대회 경험이. Welcome them to the stage. It's their first time they're here in Los Angeles, the Vancouver Titans. It's been a long time coming to watch these players stand on the Overwatch League stage. Dreams of playing in this league. Finally, they've got one title under their belt with the Korea Championship for Season 2 of Contenders. But now, in the 2019 Overwatch League se season, they're looking to build a new storyline, start a new chapter, as you mentioned. As Season 2 got underway, it became pretty clear that Runaway were ready for the Overwatch League. Steve, oh, look at the dust! Like from behind the Deadeye! Coming the down! Battle. The Pharmacy Cup is right out of there! Taking Koma! Both say goodnight. Another shot, the headshot there on the DM. Takes him out the head on the Gagarin in midair. And in style, Vancouver Titans glide into the finish on Toronto. 4-0 and their opening debut here in the 2019 Overwatch League season. Absolutely dominant. We saw so much of what has made this team strong in Korea already here. And that the rest of the league were no match for the bond that this band of brothers had formed. They aren't running away anymore, that's for sure. Vancouver <laughs> Titans coming into the league. No losses yet. Looking to make it 7-0 today. They mastered the GOAT's composition. Bumper quickly became one of the league's best leaders. This is where Bumper usually does something crazy. Do it. Give me the 360 shatter. He's coming in. He, come, he went for it. He went for it. And it worked. They couldn't get there. So Min Su has proven to be one of the league's best damage dealers, and Janu styled on D.Va all stage long. Going for the primal rage really aggressively, trying to get behind him. He gets stunned. There's the shield bash. There's the kill. Got too deep. A little bit too quick. The grab not working out. Oh, oh Janu! Janu! Gonna try to surprise him. No, goes down early as he tries to use his self destruct. John, who gets Kellex with his self destruct instead. And Vancouver just rolling over Boston. The Titans have come to feed, and that's gonna be a 2 0 lead in style for Vancouver. More than anything, though, they played like a well oiled machine. No growing pains, no hiccups. The numbers don't lie. 7 and 0 in the regular stage, 2 and 0 right now. That is a nine win streak. They went from left behind in Korea to best in the world, all in just a year. Uh, 아무래도 저희가 리그 최초로 전승 우승을 했잖아요. 그죠? 그래서 뭐 스테이지 원에서 배운 거는 다른 팀한테 질 자신이 없, 없는 것 같아요. And in March, they made history by becoming the season two stage one champions completely undefeated. It looked like it was over after they lost both the shot. A two greedy for that, but super. He has to be careful. He's caught out. Oh. He's down. That's the first pick. And now the rest would follow. Bumpy hits a huge ass shatter. And the Vancouver Titans stand on the precipice. They say the North never forgets. But now the North will never be forgotten. And the Vancouver Titans take what was promised to them. What they knew that was theirs alone. They will be the Vancouver Titans. We watched all season long as this team took the league by storm and proved they were a force to be reckoned with. Oh, it's an epic match. I mean, the shock played Vancouver better than anyone we've seen all stage. It's a huge statement win for the Titans. They come in to the Overwatch League confident champions back in Korea. They come in as an expansion team, newcomers to the Overwatch League and take our stage one. They then ran the tables once again in Stage 2, going undefeated all the way to the finals, where they were bested by the San Francisco Shaw, who have proved to be their greatest adversary. This is the Titans. Will they lose for the first time ever in the Overwatch League? mode for the Vancouver Titans. Shock. They have the sound barrier. They've got the advantage of Big Shatter under the cart. Summon Sue knocked down. He's taken out soon. Janu down as well. And the Shock, they may have done it. Now Only Bumper right remaining, Hawksall just trying to stay on the point, but that's gonna be it. The grab from Sinatra comes in, and the Shock have done it! They are your Stage 2 champions! But what we really wanted to show you today is where that story started. In Korea, with Runner and Flowervin and a dream and a broken air conditioning unit and heartbreak and perseverance. This is a historic moment. We had an incredible final. 
And one is finally able to break the barriers it took them six seasons to make. The realization of millions of competitors' dreams right in front of you. No corporate funding or fancy team houses. Just six friends behind computer screens, dressed in pink, with everything to lose and an unbreakable bond. <laughs> Fighting to do what they love for a living. They may be the Vancouver Titans now, but nobody will ever forget Runaway. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.